Greetings and welcome to the PLSQL channel, a series of video trainings on the Oracle PLSQL language. My name is Stephen Feuerstein, and I'm a PLSQL developer just like you. This lesson is the latest in my series on writing dynamic SQL in Oracle PLSQL programs, and the focus of this lesson is executing DDL and simple DML statements, that is, method one dynamic SQL. Some quick reminders. If you haven't already done so, visit PLSQL Obsession at toadworld.com slash sf, which provides access to all the code that I'll be demonstrating in this lesson and all my other lessons, as well as supporting PowerPoint documents for my trainings. In addition, make sure you're comfortable with the material covered in the previous lesson in the series, which is the introduction and overview, which means, for example, that if you don't know what I mean by method one dynamic SQL, or DDL and simple DML, then perhaps you should watch that lesson. Alrighty then, the agenda for this lesson. I'll start by talking about what is DDL, what is simple DML. We'll talk about then using execute immediate native dynamic SQL to execute DDL statements in PLSQL. We'll take a look at also using DBMS utility execute DDL statements, managing the impact of dynamic DDL, and then executing simple DML dynamically. So, what is a DDL statement? A DDL statement is a data definition language statement that means that it affects the definition of the database objects in your schema. For example, create and drop tables, create and drop PLSQL program units, alter database objects, etc. Anything that modifies the structure of the underlying objects in your database. And note that whenever you execute a DDL statement in your session, it automatically performs Oracle, performs an implicit commit, something to always remember about DDL statements. No matter where they're executed, they will perform an implicit commit. And you cannot natively execute DDL statements in PLSQL blocks as a static SQL statement. Let's take a look at that. In fact, let's close out all these other files until it's time to look at them. And let's open up the static DDL and SQL SQL. So here's a PLSQL block, and I'm going to try to create a table right inside that block. And when I run this code, Oracle tells me basically, I have no idea what you're talking about. And counted the symbol create. Create is not a statement allowed in PLSQL. It's a part of the DDL, the data definition language, and that's not available for native execution in PLSQL. Well, what if you want to do that? What if you need to create a table dynamically? You'll do it with dynamic SQL. And we'll come back to that in just a moment. Now, what is a simple DML statement? Simple DML and DDL are the statements that are executed in the method one dynamic SQL format. And in the context of dynamic SQL, a simple DML statement is one in which you are not binding a variable value from your program into the DML statement via a placeholder. And a placeholder is indicated in a dynamic SQL string by a colon followed by a string, either digits or a valid PLSQL identifier. Okay, let's take a look at some examples. Here's an example of a static DML statement. In other words, I can simply execute this update statement directly in my PLSQL code or outside of PLSQL. I'm going to give everybody in my employees table a 25% increase. Nice. So that's static DML, nothing dynamic about it. Here's a dynamic DML statement that is also simple. So I've got an update string. I'm going to concatenate the name of the table. Maybe it's employees, maybe it's my employees, maybe it's your employees. And I'm going to give everybody a 25% increase. Notice that's also inside a string. So this is dynamic SQL, dynamic DML, and it's also simple because there are no placeholders. Here are some examples of dynamic DML with placeholders. So I'm going to update the specified table, and I'm going to set the salary equal to salary times a multiplier, but I don't hard code the 25% increase here. Instead, I use the colon and then a name, or I can use a colon and a number. So the placeholder is a place where you can actually use a, a number like 1, 2, 3, or 1 as a quote-unquote name, usually in PLSQL and Oracle. You have to preface a name with a letter. So there's a slight exception here. 
So this is an example of a placeholder, placeholder. But what we're going to be talking about in this lesson are the DML statements in which you do not have placeholders. No bind variables. You simply execute a string that's constructed at runtime. OK, so let's take a look at executing dynamic SQL statements, or dynamic DDL. And what it comes down to is using execute immediate. So execute immediate is the main statement used for as a part of the native dynamic SQL operation added in Oracle 8i. And all you do is execute a string in the simplest form. You're not binding any values. You're not retrieving data back from the SQL statement and putting it into the calling block. None of that. You're simply executing the statement. Very simple. Let's take a look at some examples. And these are all examples of dynamic DDL execution. All right, first of all, drop whatever. One of my favorite dynamic DDL programs. So the program drop whatever allows me to drop pretty much anything I want in my schema really, really easily. In other words, it's an extremely dangerous program. I pass in the name, and I can wildcard it. I pass in the type of object I want to delete drop and I can wildcard it and I can specify and by default I am just checking I'm not really going to drop in my program I find all the objects that match the specified parameters it's like the name it's like the type and then with a cursor for loop I construct my drop statement here's a dynamic DDL statement drop the specified object with the specified name if it's a table or an object add cascade constraints you can have all sorts of fun here. And then, if I'm not just checking, I will execute immediate my drop string. And that's it. There's the entire part of this code that's the actual dynamic SQL execution. Simply pass the string, and it executes it for me. And then I'll show whether I succeeded or failed. Well, let's give it a try. Will it compile? Yes, my code compiles. Let's go back to my schema browser. And let's look for, oh, tables that start with the word temp. Do we have any temps here? Have I already gotten rid of all those? No temps. But here's a table that starts with the word table. Let's get rid of tables that start with the word tab. OK, so what I'm going to do is construct a block. I'm going to call drop whatever. I'm going to say I want to get rid of anything that starts with the word tab of type table and what the heck I'm gonna say I only want to check which is not a bad idea when you're doing drops so I execute this this program and it shows me that it would drop tab 1 table of numbers table of X rows notice just checking so now I'm gonna say good I really want to get rid of that stuff run my script and it successfully dropped three tables so drop whatever is a very powerful, flexible utility. And I, I like to show this because it highlights two great things or two important things about dynamic DDL. Number one, you can create really excellent utilities that do lots of work for you without having to manually do each step independently or manually. And second of all, it's an extremely dangerous, powerful tool. So be careful about how you ever write and run dynamic DDL operations, especially as stored program units. You're probably never going to use drop whatever, but what you might want to do is take this program, show it to your DBA, and say, look what I learned in my class today. And here's a, here's a great utility you can use, and they'll probably have a heart attack. OK, so that's one example. Let's take a look at create index. Here's a very simple program that says take the index name, the table name, the list of columns, and it simply constructs the create index statement and runs it. So nothing fancy here, probably not a terribly useful uh, generalized utility. For example, we don't allow them to specify whether it's unique or not. But it demonstrates, again, that you can construct these statements and execute them on the fly. Set trig is probably a more interesting utility for you. You might want to disable or enable all the triggers on a specified table, and this program will do it for you. Specify the table, the owner of the table, and the actions you want to enable or disable. It finds all the triggers on the table, sets up or defines the alter trigger statement, and then executes it. So that's something you might actually find useful in your environment. Create user. 
what if I need to create a user on the fly dynamically to build some scripts or to run some tests? I connect as it my sys account. Oh no, now you know my my sys password. I hope you don't crack into my laptop. Here's my create user program. Execute immediate. First I'll drop the user in case it already exists. I check to see if the user does not exist, in which case I don't care. That's good. That's the negative 1918 error. If anything else goes wrong, I want to raise an error and not continue. And then I will create a schema granting session and resource to my user identified by the same name for the password and so on. So this script will allow you to create users, grant additional privileges and so on. And let's see, let's take a look at the last two, DBMS error log helper and execute the DDL and file. Now DBMS error log and helper, DBMS error log helper is a script that I wrote to help you use the DBMS error log package and the log errors feature. So check out the error management lesson or series and the DBMS error log and log errors feature to learn about more about this feature and why you'd want to use this package. But the bottom line is that within this package I say I have a create objects program and in it I do lots of dynamic DDL. I drop the error log table if it already exists. I call a built-in program from Oracle that actually does dynamic DDL itself. It creates an error log table. I use dynamic DDL to alter my table, adding columns. I use dynamic DDL to create a trigger to populate those new columns. I generate and compile a package. All of this is dynamic DDL. The bottom line is that dynamic DDL gives you an incredible amount of power and flexibility that you can use in a very wide range of ways. And finally, exec DDL and file. This is my most generic exec DDL program. And it basically says, hey, you've got something like the DBMS error log helper package. You've got a file that's full of a DDL statement. In fact, two, create a replace package, create a replace package body. These are DDL statements. This program, exec DDL from file, will read the contents of your file, load it into an array of strings, and then use, in this case, DBMS SQL to execute the statement dynamically. Now, I haven't shown you DBMS SQL yet. We'll be coming back to that in the advanced topics. So in this case, I'm using a different mechanism to execute the DDL statement. But the bottom line is it's the same effect, dynamically execute DDL statements. OK, so lots of different examples. I encourage you to play around with all of these. Well, I'm not sure about play around. If you have a little schema or a little data,